Hello and welcome to my new Livest Let's Play. Those of you who've seen these before will probably be aware that the Livest Let's Play is when I play something basically completely blind on camera. I have been Let's Playing um, Die Hard Dungeon, as you will know if you follow my channel, but now I've actually reached the end of the dungeon, if not in fact finished the game. I'm putting that on a little hiatus. There's still plenty to do, I still haven't found all ten gold keys, so I have effectively failed even though I've got to the end of the dungeon, but that seems like an opportune moment to take a break and do something a little different. So here is a game that appeared on my radar a while back when it was first released, and I scoffed for reasons that should be apparent. It's, um, it's a little gratuitous in some respects from what I can tell. But I've heard it's actually not bad, um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious though, so I'm going to give it a try and just see what happens. So here we go. Um, first, I'm going to look at help, just in case there's anything I need to know before we get started. Okay, that's all straightforward enough. Okay. Fine. Yes, Bureau. Agent Kendall. Which is a little disconcerting, because, um... Oh yes, this <laughs> this is Bureau Agent Kendall, incidentally. I didn't think I introduced it. Um, but it's a little disconcerting because I used to share a flat with someone called Kendall, and she was not an agent. And I don't think she had a bureau. Um, and she didn't look like this. Anyway, moving on, let's just play. That's enough lengthy intro. Select a save location, fine. Ah, there's an existing save. I must have played the demo at some point, although I don't remember it. Hmm. Well, maybe it'll ring some bells as we get stopped. Is that real footage? Well, that sign's not real footage. No, I don't think it is. Okay, so we're in the FBI. Oh my god! That is the most horrific looking face I've ever seen. Hello, bad man as hell. If only you knew I was recording at this moment. Anyway. Agent Kendall, thanks for coming by. I have your new assignment. It is going to seem a little odd. I don't think I'm going to voice act the entire thing, but <laughs> for the time being it's keeping me amused. Please read this assignment and then give me a chance to explain. I'm reading it a little like the dramatic reading of a real breakup letter, but that's not intentional. Look that up on YouTube if you never have. Incidentally. I've been transferred into... I'm not going to do a woman's voice. That's terrible. So, I've been transferred to homicide. And it's a mistake! Because the FBI never work on homicides! Okay, so it is a little off the beaten path for you. You look like you want to say something. Oh, that's me now, is it? Why is the director's office so gloomy? You'd think a director would have some more ornaments and, you know, a light or something. Anyway, what do I want to say to him? Oh, do I want to swear at my boss right to his face? Well, look at Angel Kendall's expression. She has the face of someone who would swear gratuitously at her boss, so let's do it. I'm completely disappointed by your reaction, and this outburst will go into your file, along with your observations about the fact that my face doesn't move. The Bureau is trying a new program. Have you heard of the term groupthink? Isn't that from 1984? I don't think it was a good thing. Well, anyway. So, basically... They're bringing in people who haven't worked on homicide in an attempt to broaden the pool of experience and introduce new perspectives. It makes a certain kind of sense. However, with budget cuts, they have to reduce, not expand. So, oh, okay, so I'm an IT person, and they're bringing me in to solve murders. Makes perfect sense. In theory, what you learn in the field will make you better at computer security. Will it bollocks? I'm sorry, but that's just rubbish. I know, you don't know anything about homicide. <laughs> so your master plan for redeeming the performance of the FBI is to assign people to things they've never done before and don't understand. Anyway, I have to go and meet with Agent Kyler. With a name like that, he has to be a dick. Or she, I suppose. 
Okay, here we go. Meet in a deserted lot of some sort. Oh God, he looks like a Thunderbird. Tell me he doesn't look like a Tracy. One of the Tracy brothers. Actually, if you squint, he looks a little bit like Jack Nicholson in Batman. He's going to have to be the villain. I'm sorry, Jack, but you are. You're just an evil guy. You must be Agent Kendall. I am Special Agent Dale Clyre. I thought it was Kylo a minute ago. Oh, well. Maybe not. I'm your mentor slash special partner. Yep, it is Kyla. He mispronounced his own name. <laughs> what do you mean by special part? Oh, really? Really? Ugh. Looks like a storm is coming. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, well... Let's get all suggestive on his ass. From a pure hierarchical standpoint, you work for me. <laughs> Since you have some issues with authority, I thought it might be good to act like we're partners. Before we get started, do you have any questions? Well, looks like a storm is coming is not a question, so let's go with the one with the question mark. <laughs> no, you must call me master. Before we get started, do you have any questions? Didn't you say that a minute ago? Is there something wrong with you, Dale Clyre slash Kyla? Okay, well, let's be all prophetic and portentous and say, Looks like a storm is coming. Okay. <laughs> I wish people reacted that way more often in films where people say cheesy portentous things like that. It looks like a storm is coming. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay, you have a mysterious new assignment and you want to talk about the weather. Uh, no, I, I was being figurative, Dale. I think the first lesson we should go over is being prepared. Judging by your insightful questions, you obviously did not prepare for this meeting. However, I did. Let me show you. I don't want to know about your preparations, and I certainly don't want to see them. Why don't you own a cat? Well, I think Agent Kendall's expression says it all there. Slack-jawed gawp. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, definitely agree with this third point here. But I'm going to lie to his face. I mean, he'll know. Obviously he'll know, but I want him to think I'm a lying bastard. So... Your body language is good, no obvious tells, but you're lying. I know because I broke into your flat and looked for your cat, but you don't have one. You do, however, have some very interesting underwear. If anyone walks past my door and hears me saying that in that voice... <laughs> well, at least he's self-aware. You have been thinking about Pearl... You left that cat as a little girl. All right, David Blaine, steady on. You just broke up with your boyfriend. Oh my god. I added you on Facebook, didn't I? And I didn't even realise. Oh. Too bad the coffee shop in Third Street does not allow pets. Who brings a cat to a coffee shop? Uh. Um. I'm not really satisfied with any of these answers, so I'm going to just talk straight. Well, stalking is what we do. <laughs> oh, God. Run away. Please run away. This man is the worst person I've ever beheld. Uh, and his unwavering Jack Nicholson face is really weirding me out. Also, the fact that he's looking straight at me. I assume this is meant to be Agent Kendall's point of view. Hence him looking straight at me. But I swear his eyes are looking out of the TV into my very pants. All this information came from public sources. Like breaking and entering. You know security, so you need to get this fixed. We're going to be dealing with people much worse than stalkers. As my <laughs> partner... You are also putting me at risk. Ugh. I have a homework assignment for you. Oh. Oh. I don't want your homework. 
Uh, okay, here we go. Sorry, that, that was really, really slow. I'll probably have to pick up the pace for this Let's Play. But I was so much enjoying acting Dale Kyler like a complete creepy, pervy asshole. Anyway, you can use your PDA to research your cases. Okay. So I have to research Agent Kyler slash Clyer. Alright, here we go. Pop open the PDA. So you get a nice, almost full body shot of her unsupported chest. <sighs> okay. Well, at least it didn't linger too long. It'll give us a close-up. Alright, so we have new things in the journal and in current case. Let's start with the journal. It looks like, at the bottom, well, it says available research hours. So, apparently we have four hours to do research. Presumably each action will use up time, I would guess. So there's the journal. Fine. Um, so let's go into current case. People. Um, okay, background information, I suppose. So, we don't have time. I assume that number is the number of hours. That seems to make sense, don't you think? So, uh, we don't have time to do a full FBI background check, but we can do a basic online search using one hour and then spend the other three hours playing table tennis or something. Or we can use the full four hours to go through the FBI records. Well, considering his sleaziness, I'm not sure I want to impress him with my research skills. Uh, but maybe he'll ease off a bit if I make a good impression. Alright, this one. Since it's the first task, let's go all out. Um, well, a green tick appeared. And now at the bottom we have no hours left. I suppose we'll probably have to exit. Yeah, there we go. New hypothesis added, apparently. Agent Kendall's laptop is very precarious. Okay, congrats, you finished your research. How does she make her top cling to the underside of her breast like that? That's ridiculous. Not that I'm looking. I, I don't find this weird, uncanny valley mannequin stuff appealing, but clearly the developers think someone does. Anyway, finished your research, press start, look in the journal to see a summary of your findings. So, what have we found out about Agent Kyler? He's active in the field and in training. He's an expert on overcoming bias and fact-based investigations. How do you overcome a fact-based investigation? That makes no sense. He's also given training on family loss and stress. He's received countless awards. And he spends a lot of time training others. In other words, he's an overachieving prick. What else have we got? Agent Kyler... Oh, okay, that's just our quest, so to speak. All right, well, that's not very exciting. Um, anything else in here? Okay, hypothesis. All right, so we have a ready-made hypothesis here. And we... Oh, two of them, in fact. So we can go with one or the other of these, presumably. We've got... Kyler has an excellent record at the agency and seems to be actively involved. Blah, blah, blah. He's an excellent agent. I'll be able to learn from him. And it's a pretty weak hypothesis, according to the number at the bottom. Basically, we don't know enough, I think. But it's still better than this one. Once active, he's now much more into training. And he's experienced a great personal loss because he spends so much time teaching about it. But that is pure speculation. So let's go with the bare facts, with the slightly stronger hypothesis here. No? Yeah, okay. So we can make one active. We don't actually do anything with it. We just make it our active hypothesis, apparently. All right, press A to finish the day. Well, we don't have more time left to do anything. It's presumably just suddenly become horizontal and go to sleep. So here we go. Oh, let's go to sleep. As her, fa her flat completely disappears into the void behind her. Morning. Why do you always insist on meeting in this deserted lot 10 miles from anywhere? Doesn't make me feel better. In fact, have you. You're wearing the same clothes. Have you even moved from this spot? Have you just stood here all night waiting for me to come back? Your questions will be based on what you researched and what hypothesis you selected. Okay, so that's what 
the hypothesis does. When you select an active hypothesis, it gives you conversation options. That's nice. I like that as an idea. So, let's start with me interrogating this asshole. Expert on biases, can you give an example? Why did you start teaching? What do you think is the biggest challenge for the ages? Oh. None of those seem particularly insightful. Let's ask him about the teaching. I find teaching helps me to think about and improve what I do in the field. If you want to learn more about something, try <laughs> teaching it to someone. Is that how you got your pro skills, Dale? Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Please ask me something. I, I think you need to work on your chat up lines. But give me an example of bias. Just sounds like a generic job interview question. But don't really have much else to ask him, so let's try that. Sure. A common one is called confirmation bias. Basically, you're trying to confirm what you already think. Blah, blah, blah. We read from news sources that conform with our underlying bias. Okay, so you, you're more inclined to remember facts that fit what you already believe to be the case. Bias is a key part of how our brain works. We have to know our limitations and work against them. I'm, I'm starting to grow bored of delivering this um, fairly dry, grey dialogue in his sneery tones. I'll wait until he says something more interesting. Okay, so ask him about the biggest FBI challenge. I really am just giving him a job interview. I like to focus on things I can change, like your clones. Um, okay, what's next? Well, that's a lot, really. So, we've got a bit of waffle about the hypothesis here. Already figured all that out. Please open your PDA and select hypothesis and the current case. Now, I'm not taking my eyes off you for a second. Okay, so current case, hypothesis, and let's change to this crappy hypothesis. And now we exit, and... Okay, so we've got a different load of questions to ask him, so that's fine. So let's go for his personal loss. Bold and somewhat reckless question. <laughs> Normally you try to build rapport with someone before jumping into something as personal as that. Well, I would try to build rapport with you, but you're a creepy dick who just sat outside my flat for weeks watching me go and get coffee and then broke in to examine my cat. Alright. But, <laughs> despite all this blessing, he has in fact suffered a loss. Um, winning the lottery or losing a limb has little to do with your future happiness. Well, that's opinion, isn't it? It's not fact. <sighs> okay, this is all very deep, but I don't really care, Agent Kyler. Oh, God, alright, what's next? Let's mock his decision to teach. I do both, smart ass. Or is he complimenting me? Smart ass. I think that's the best of both worlds, or some people call them buttocks. So uh, let's ask about the stress now. A lot of people suffer from stress. Long term stress damages our bodies. And I'm not just talking about ulcers, I'm also talking about your buttocks again. So let's just abandon that conversation. Oh god. Alright, clearly this whole thing has been tutorial. You're not going to actually do the research, but let's talk about it. My favourite. Is global warming true? How would you find out? <clears throat> um, personally, I'd probably go online. So let's start there. Online research is good for some things, but only trivial details. Oh, Oh, he looks so unhappy with this answer. In the online world, it's hard to tell the experts from the cranks. Well, only if you just use Wikipedia. There are other options, you know. Oh, try giving me a better answer. Fuck you. Alright, well... Don't really want to read the entire IPCC report. That would be pretty intense. I mean, it would probably give the best information, but it's hardly time efficient, is it? So, probably use our unique resources. 
I think this is the best answer. For complex questions, it's good to go to someone that is an expert in the field. Like you, you mean. Time permits, it's often good to try and find someone else in your network that has a different view. Yeah, that's the whole premise of me being here, I'm afraid. Okay, so sometimes you have to make a quick decision and the screen will flash at you, just like the real world does all the time. Here's an example. Just watch, you don't need to do anything. And the screen flashing red while Agent Kendall looks deeply alarmed is fairly horrifying. It looks like he's about to attack it. If you don't make a decision, one will be made for you. In many cases, the normal response is to freeze. Well, not if you're accustomed to playing games, I'm afraid. Okay, another example. You'll need to answer a question within 20 seconds. In terms of their child's safety... Let's not even go there, Dale. You're already creepy enough. Let's not talk about child safety. Um, I'd say family members. Correct. It is thousands of times, thousands of times more likely that someone in your family will do something bad to your child than anyone else, like me, for example. Ugh, God. Can we get out of this empty lot, please? Couldn't we have done this in an office or a McDonald's or something? Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> For a second, as the text was scrolling out, I thought it was going to stop it. What about all the sex? Don't you want to keep track of that? <laughs> Definitely. But that is not what we have. <laughs> Except me. We have politicians and fear-based laws that don't really understand the problem. Oh, God, so you're not actually just law enforcement. You're some kind of revolutionary fan. Bloody-tastic. Uh, focus in the wrong direction lets the criminals go free or worse. I think focusing in the wrong direction would be a better way of saying it, but I'm not going to correct your grammar. I just want to get away from your face. Oh, crap. That is bad news. Not that I want to get away from your face. Alright, so we've got a perimeter alert. So I'm fully... Wait, you set up a perimeter? What the hell is wrong with you? Are you having flashbacks to Vietnam? Yeah, okay, as long as it keeps beeping. You don't want anyone to see what we're getting up to, is that it? <laughs> yeah, what happens when the beeping stops? As long as he's moving, it beeps. When there's a solid beep, it means that he's stopped and is aiming. Or, in fact, has just stopped. You know, he might be eating some crisps or something. His name is Wally Brown. He's an, an, an anti-extremist extremist. So he's full of self-loathing, then. He'd really like to kill you. Yeah, I agree. Well, he is crazy. There are plenty of anti-extremist extremists. Oh, God. All right, here we go. No political ideology. He pretty much just kills anyone. So he's a psycho. Oh, All right, go on, give me an example. He went after Linda Green, founder of Green's Foundation of Faith Only Healing. She didn't believe in medicine. He kidnapped her and did experiments on her. So he's Jigsaw. Finally, he poisoned her and put the antidote right in front of her. But she would rather die than drink an antidote. Because she's a loser. Wally was surprised that his name is Wally. She thought she was a fake and would break. What he didn't realise was that she was insane. There's a fine line between being insane and being admired. Hear voices at the wrong time and you get to live in an institute. Oh, very deep. Can we get on with it, please? Okay, so so far, Bureau Agent Kendall is mainly a platform for the developer to tell us about their worldview, which is starting to get pretty old. Once this conversation with creepy Dale Kyler wraps up, I think I will call it a day for episode one, and we'll see if episode two shows us some actual gameplay. But for the time being, you never know, maybe Wally will do me a favour and run up and stab this dick in the face. <sighs> Alright, Wally goes after those people now. That sounds like a euphemism for minorities. Dale, I happen to notice you're a slick all-American Caucasian. So that That's not my choice of phrase. I lifted it from an episode of The X-Files that I was watching recently. Um, 
These people can be very dangerous. They're not often breaking the law. Wally is. Okay, the beeping's getting faster. He's getting into position. You need to tell me some things. You're carrying two types of guns. He's a sniper. And a poorly modified M60 machine gun. What the hell? What kind of assassin carries a sniper rifle and an M60? Good God. Well, if he's going to assassinate you using an M60, then he's just a complete moron. We're going to need to use my car for cover. It won't work long against the machine gun. Fine. So, you're going to leave your safety to me. When there's a solid beep, we should dive for cover. Presumably this is going to be some kind of quick time event then. Do I really have to save your life, Dale and Kyla? <sighs> Alright, here we go then. Are you ready? Yeah, go on then. Wait for the beep to change. Is that the right moment? Oh, he's just sipping his coffee. Here we go. Straight for the M60. So he is in fact a moron. And he threw coffee in his own face. Ugh. He may switch back to his sniper rifle. Because he has no idea what he's doing. Once he's alerted us to his location, he whips out his silenced rifle. Okay, wait for him to shoot and then run for more cover. This was just an excuse to get me alone with you behind the car, wasn't it, Dale? I bet he's not actually Wally the crazy assassin. He's actually your roomie, Barry. We need to run as soon as he starts shooting his low uh shooting the big gun. <laughs> we can dive for cover behind your car or behind a concrete wall. Um so you're saying either we can run to my car and get that completely totaled like your car, or we can dive behind the cover that the bullets won't go through. How is that even a choice? How did you get to be one of the best agents in the FBI? All right, here we go. I would go for the wall. Well, I didn't notice the first shot, but... Oh. Well, apparently we got killed. Um... Right. Okay, let's try that again then. Here we go. Uh, I don't get it. It says wait for the first shot, so I wait for the first shot and then we get killed. So I'm basically just going to go as soon as possible here. Well, it would be helpful if you brought up the dialogue option early enough. Right, so there was absolutely no explanation for that at all. Ugh, okay. It might not seem like it, but we're safe now. We just need to wait. My alarm also triggered a call to the backup FBI squad. They should be here in a few minutes. Wally will have gone. So what's the bloody point? Ah, here comes the backup. Oh, he likes his backup. Oh, yeah. All right. So, well, no wonder he had such an easy time stalking her. She has floor-to-ceiling windows on all sides. Maybe you're not calling to tell me something bad, like the fact that my top is falling down for no good reason. I just want to see if you're awake and wearing it. I mean, if you're okay. I've never had someone try to kill me with a gun. Oh, I'm not going to tell him I don't want to be alone. I'd rather be alone than near him. So I'm going to say I feel numb, because I'm probably numb from the cold, considering how little I'm wearing. Yeah. Me too. You just need some rest. Why is he rubbing the side of his face? He's caressing his own ear. So that doesn't look like he's holding a phone. I uh, don't want to keep you. But I did want to tell you that we need to start our first assignment. So he phoned up under the pretense of asking if I'm okay, only to spring a job on me. Ugh. Ugh. Alright, go on then. You need some sleep now. I'll meet you for coffee in the morning. Ugh, oh, brilliant. 7am? Oh, bloody hell. Fine. Whatever. Super. God, I hate Dale Kyler. Anyway, at this point, I'm going to call it a day for episode one. Rejoin me for our 
even creepier breakfast date with the apparently suddenly midget-like Dale Kyler in the blurry coffee shop the next time round in episode 2. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.